previously on Otter Hill Adventure Company. Shooting for the 1000 meter portage out back into Kukagami Lake. The plan was to leave today and have tomorrow as a rest day, recovery day before uh, going back to work. But I'm really just going to have to see how it goes. It um, That last portage was just a killer and this one hopefully is not the same kind of incline. So. But we're just going to have to adapt our map as we go and see how it goes. I kind of understand it, although I want to always play by the rules. It's a big lake for only having five campsite sites on it. I mean, situations like last night were, or, or yesterday evening. If I was too windbound to get back, there weren't a lot of options. And uh, what am I going to do? You know? might be forced to uh, camp on a site that isn't official. Although, of course, I would like to avoid that at all costs. There's a reason that uh, a park is managed so it doesn't just become an absolute free-for-all. And Also, you're not going to get a Thunderbox, which is a big disadvantage in my books. Adam loves his Thunderboxes. Way better than digging cat holes. Well, here's the portage. Oh, please be kind. This is not nearly the beast that I had to tackle on Model 1100. It's relatively flat. It's quite pretty. The uh, My concern now is when I brought the first load and dumped it at the other end, the lake had uh, started to white cap. And that's no fun in the wrong direction. So, I don't know. I might be forced to spend another night here, which I wouldn't mind at all. If that happens, I will get up critically early to paddle flat water, which I'm never really able to do. I usually leave a site around 10 Lately, after packing up and eating and filming and musing over my own inner thoughts, but we'll uh, have to see. Got some fellow campers that in the other way. Good afternoon, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Bay looks rough out there. It's uh, windy on the other side. Oh man. I was so happy because this portage is relatively flat. Yeah. Yeah. But other challenges, I suppose. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. So, as I was saying, we'll have to see. Oh, can't wait to cook up some lunch. 
GoPro is getting a little bit low on battery. It's giving me the warning light. I've had to charge it once. I still have power in my power bank. I still have power in my Luminade light, which can be used to also charge electronics. And I still have power in the, the cheaper, uh, but kind of neat and bright disc light. It's got a, a USB out as well. So should be all right for power. Camera I'm not worried about. I have batteries enough to last me. Uh, the cell phone's actually been lasting about 50 to 60% after a day of use. And that's mapping and GPS and photos, etc. So couldn't ask for a nicer day, I'll tell you what. Not too hot, sunny. But not looking forward to fighting that headwind. Really gonna have to sit and maybe I'll maybe do a quick Zolia weather report and just see what the winds are gonna be like. You know, if I waited an hour or something. But I mean, who knows? The weather does what it wants to. Like I was just pumping myself up to get across that first bay because it was so windy and I had to fight right into the wind. And then as soon as I get into the bay, boom, wind stops. And it's been blowing the whole time. Like, every time I went to the portage and came back, just nuts. I mean, I'm not complaining. But, is that a thing? I don't know. Seems strange. Okay, well, this is gonna be home for the night. It's it's pretty. You can tell it's been, uh, people have been here. There's gotta be one, two, three, four, five different fire pits that they've moved around, so. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is take the one closest to the shore and just make it nice and tidy, small and neat. I'll show you what this rock quarry looks like. It's more than that than a fire pit. Looks like it started there and moved over there, but maybe they're worried about it killing the tree. And then this is just a I don't even have the energy to deal with them. So I uh, cleaned up the best little fire pit. I, I don't know which one. I mean, there was a big one. It's been, like I said, it's been moved so many times, but there's one by the water with a nice tent pad right beside it, which uh, is the nicest spot. But I've... Uh, I cut some of the branches off of this spruce tree because it's on the way out. And clearly there's gonna be people having a fire in that pit again. And uh, the last thing I would want is for this dead tree to go up in smoke and potentially be hazardous, so. I typically don't touch stuff close to the water line because it's unsightly. Uh, but like I said, this tree is on the way out and I just feel safer um, for me and for people following me. We're gonna go small and contained tonight. Keep it a, uh, a low burning hot fire for cooking and just to be able to stare at the coals. And of course I'll put it out before I retire.
can't beat the view. I found some scraps around the site, a couple of rounds, and fashioned myself a little table. Trick was getting it level. Had a little stone to put the corner up, but yeah, so I can prep my meal. Again, just look at how clear that water is. Straight out of the lake. That's nuts. Look at that. So I like to perform magic when I'm out on these trips. For me, those special little charm bags really resonate out here and the intentions seem to find their mark. And this is an Odin stone. It was a gift from Diana and it's one of my favorite magical tools. Here's what it is. The Adder Stone also known as a hag stone or witch stone or odin stone is a stone with a natural hole in it the holes are often perfect circles and are thought to be the result of erosion from seawater over hundreds of years looking through the stone it's said you can see the fairy realm now that's exciting Ten past eight, and we are packed up and on the water. I'm gonna try and get ahead of the southwesterly winds that are coming a little later. I opted not to do the 340 meter portage out and uh, do the paddle around the land mass instead. I uh, I don't know what that 340 is. It could be straight uphill, and I'm just not into it. But. We ain't home yet.
approaching the final leg of the trip. Tamagami has been a lot of fun. There were challenges, some touch and go moments, some unseen surprises, unexpected surprises. What a beautiful expanse of land. It certainly lives up to its reputation. Well, that was fascinating. After I delivered my closing comment about the last leg of the tour, I heard behind me, excuse me, and a gentleman in a paddle boat or you know, kayak-esque boat came up uh, behind me and said, I'd like to know what you're doing paddling so close to shore and filming people's cottages. And uh, I said, no, not at all. I, uh, I was just trying to stay out of the wind. After McCarthy Bay, uh, I'm anxious about being on these, this, this area on the lake. The wind kicks up so fast and uh, it just was making me nervous. I'm also running out of steam. It's the end of the trip. And it immediately reminded me of the... Uh, tarot card I drew, drew yesterday and speaks to the message that I was delivered. Which was about being wary of being lured into a situation or an argument that I know I shouldn't. And in, in a situation like that, your knee-jerk reaction is to get your back up. But I think kindness goes a long way. And I introduced myself and explained I was filming some ducks, delivering a closing comment. Gave him my, my name and a card for my channel. And uh, we ended up having a, a lovely discussion on the water. I, I understand property owners want to protect their, their investments. We had a cottage in the Addington Highlands and we were victims of theft ourselves. So I certainly understand it. And we ended up talking about the area and uh, the various lakes surrounding us. And Instead of a confrontation, hopefully uh, I ended up making a friend instead and possibly a supporter of the channel. So, in any case, it ended on a good note and I'm really happy about that. It uh, makes the, uh, the end of this trip that much sweeter. So. Coming just around the bend, and we'll pack up and get on the road. I'm so close to the takeout, and I had to beach the canoe. The wind just picked up, and uh, it, I did want to capsize. That's what I'm looking at. Close. The Sportsman's Lodge is like right down that way. That way. Just hoping to get a window where it just dies down enough that I can just skip across the bay. I'm so close. Okay, new plan. 
I was sitting on the beach and uh, waiting for the wind to die down and it just kept picking up. It's just a short jaunt across that bay, but the, uh, the water all came over the sidewall already once. And the swells are quite large. More than enough to capsize my little 14.6 solo. And the compound that, I'm exhausted, I'm starving. And that's when uh, you make bad decisions in impatience. Luckily, the property owner, very kind older gentleman, came uh, by in a quad and offered uh, to let me load my stuff up at on his driveway uh, behind where I was beached. So I'm walking back to uh, the sportsman's lodge. Oh, side note, he is the one who built the Sportsman's Lodge and he's been, he's been here since 1945. Bit of history there. So I'm going to hike it back to the lodge, grab my truck, and then come back and load there. And then out. Shouldn't be more than a kilometer or two. I actually have no idea. How long it is. <laughs> oh, I was going to get the truck, and from in front of the truck, as I was walking down to the lodge, a uh, mama bear and three cubs. I whipped out my camera and my cell phone and pointed to that direction, trying to uh, stay safe distance, not to spook her. But uh, I don't know if I got it or not. And then just as soon as they appeared, they were gone. Wow, full of surprises today. Well, that rounds out this trip. Tamagami was full of surprises and unexpected twists and turns. We'll see you on the next one.